Hello, this is Dr. Tushar Shah. Today is the 22nd of July and we are on the 14th day of our course on outpatient management of COVID-19. Today, I talk about D-dimer. D-dimer is a blood test and D-dimer is a fibrin degradation product. So as a blood test, it tells us in COVID-19 whether there is coagulopathy occurring or not. As you know, COVID-19 can cause endothelialitis, inflammation of the endothelium. And this inflammation can cause thrombosis in especially small vessels. And this thrombosis therefore will lead to an elevation of D-dimer. The upper limit of normal of D-dimer is 500 nanograms per ml, sometimes also quoted as 0.5 micrograms per ml. So 0 0.5, 500, just remember that. And any elevation above that usually indicates coagulopathy. Remember, D-dimer has many false positive elevations, but if the patient is a proven COVID-19 and the D-dimer is even above 500, you should presume that there is some thromboembolism occurring. One value of D-dimer is also important and serial rise in D-dimer is also important. Meaning thereby that if the D-dimer is more than 500, if the patient has comorbidities, has the age below above 60, you will probably start the patient on anticoagulation. Such a patient is usually hospitalized and started on anticoagulation. However, a family physician can give the first day's dose of anticoagulation at home before the patient gets a bed in a hospital. So that is your duty as a family physician. May consider giving anticoagulation at home if D-dimer is high, patients to be hospitalized and patient has comorbidities or age above 60. So an absolute value between 500 and 1000 is a borderline value. A value of 1000 or more I would definitely give, definitely give 0.4 clexin at home before the patient is hospitalized. If the value is above 2000 in the hospital, they would usually give a therapeutic dose, not just a prophylactic dose of enoxaparin, which might be 0.6 ml twice a day. Is there an option to uh, injectable anticoagulation because you can't give injectables easily at home? There is. There's a tablet called Apixaban, a newer, newer anticoagulant oral anticoagulant which is by the brand name Eliquis. Eliquis 2.5 milligram can be given on the day prior to hospitalization if the patient is waiting for a hospital bed. You can give a 2.5 milligram tablet once a day that you can do. Serially rising D-dimers typically seen in the hospital are an indication that this patient has a significantly severe disease and his lungs can worsen because of the coagulopathy and that sometimes decides the therapeutics. At home, when do you do D-dimer test? D-dimer test typically is part of the first set of blood tests ordered. So if you order blood tests, D-dimer has to be a part of that blood test. I do not order below the age of 40 blood tests unless there are comorbidities. Above the age of 40, below the age of 60, comorbidities will determine blood tests. Above the age of 60, whether or not comorbidities, blood tests are mandatory. This is my uh, working. If you are sending blood tests, D-dimer has to be the part of the first set of blood tests. Serial D-dimers will depend on how long the fever is staying. If fever is persistent, I would do a D-dimer again after two or three days. If I cannot be 100% sure that the patient needs hospitalization on the basis of clinical grounds, I will look to a rising D-dimer as one criterion for hospitalizing the patient. So that is about D-dimer before hospitalization or in hospital. After the patient is discharged, check the last D-dimer done in the hospital. If it is above 500, and if the patient has stayed in the hospital for a long time, maybe 14 days or more, think of a possible deep vein thrombosis or a pulmonary thromboembolism already having occurred. If the patient has had evidence of DVT, he would be committed to three months of oral anticoagulation. So on discharge, if you do not, if you're not sure and the D-dimer is high, get a venous Doppler of the lower limbs done. If DVT is there, you will insist on oral anticoagulation with apixaban or maybe warfarin for at least three months. So that is all about D-dimer. The next talk will be on CRP. Thank you so much.